Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, large-scale mobilizations take place in India in support of farmers' protests. 12 American companies account for nearly 61% of all arms sales in 2019, says report. Indigenous communities resist controversial mining deal in Arizona and the US. And protests intensify in France against global security bill. In our first story, people across India mobilized in large numbers on Tuesday for the countrywide strike against the central government's anti-farmer laws. The call for the strike was announced as tens of thousands of farmers entered their 13th day of protest at the borders of Delhi. Demonstrations in solidarity were witnessed all across the country in the form of road blockades, picketing and sit-ins. Shops and even factories were shut down in states such as Punjab, Tamil Nadu and parts of Madhya Pradesh. Protesters in many parts of the country also organized blockades on major roadways and railway tracks. 18 opposition parties, various trade unions and political organizations also extended their full support for the strike. In many places, the governments responded with heavy deployment of police forces. Protesters and political leaders from the opposition were arrested and detained in large number, numbers across the country. Moreover, there was heavy police presence at the residences of prominent social and political activists. In a surprise announcement towards the evening, Home Minister Amit Shah invited the representatives of farmers for negotiations which are ongoing at the time of recording this episode. The farmers are demanding the withdrawal of three farm laws, which they say will drive down the prices they are getting for their produce. These laws are also likely to allow greater corporate entry into agriculture. In our next story, 12 American companies account for nearly 61% of all international arms sales that took place in 2019. Out of the 12, five companies alone had a share of nearly 46% of all weapon sales. These are Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon and General Dynamics. These figures were published in the latest report by the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute or SIPRI. 25 of the world's top arms sales companies were featured in this report which is titled Mapping the International Presence of the World's Largest Arms, arms Companies. The list also featured companies from China, Russia, the United Arab Emirates and countries in Europe. The top 25 companies also recorded an increase of 8.5% in weapon sales in 2019 as compared to 2018. The dominance of the United States in arms sales is also due in part to the sanctions against Russian firms as well as the government mandated limits on acquisitions on Chinese firms. The report further pointed to a worrying trend of increasing defense expenditure across the world. Low and middle income countries have also begun to be incorporated in the global arms trade. This is also signaled by the increased presence of international arms companies in the global south, with Saudi Arabia, India and Singapore emerging as new hubs. According to the report, 17 out of the 49 companies, countries that host these companies can be categorized as low or middle income countries. The emphasis on increasing defense expenditure in countries such as US, China and India has also proven beneficial for these companies. In our next story, the outgoing Trump administration may approve a land swap deal in the state of Arizona which is being opposed by indigenous activists. These activists state that the deal will have irreversible socio-economic and environmental impact. Importantly, the deal may also desecrate sacred religious and cultural grounds which are crucial to indigenous histories and identities. If approved, the deal will see a swap where a copper mine will be built on a 2400 acre stretch of land that is of importance to indigenous history. Mining companies have been trying to gain control of the area since 1995. In September, San Carlos Apache tribe leaders were informed that the date for the final environmental impact survey for the site was moved ahead by a whole year to December 2020. This, coupled with the restrictions due to the pandemic, has left indigenous communities unable to respond. The swap deal can be finalized only after the environmental study is published. Rio Tinto, the company behind Resolution Copper, which is going to build the mine, was recently accused of destroying a 46,000-year-old aboriginal site in Australia. An abandoned mine owned by the company in Papua New Guinea has also poisoned a nearby river affecting the health of nearly 12,000 people, media reports say. The administration and Rio Tinto continue to deny claims of fast-tracking the study. However, if this assessment is completed, the project would have been effectively approved. This would make it nearly impossible for local communities to swap, stop the land swap. And finally, protests are continuing in France against a controversial global security bill which grants greater power to the police. Here is a video feature on the latest round of protests against the bill.
that's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, avanzañar.